Sunshine. Look at the size difference between these. Let me see. I'm feeling lucky today. One, two, three. This channel is about showing you what happens, the reality of it. That is rotted, and, and look at this. Oh. It's actually where the mold is, it's it is stuck, infections. and this guy is alive. Guys, I think the humane thing to do is just put this animal down. Hold on a second. Oh my God. Wait, Whoa, a, wait second. a minute. Hey guys, what's going on? Hanging out here. Of course, these are the baby cherry heads, but it's also not just a nursery for cherry heads. I did have some fun things happen, as does happen in October, usually the end of October. We always wind up with baby rhinos. Look at this, guys, little baby rhino. This boy is heated up, let me tell you. This is a beautiful little fat pot belly baby rhinoceros iguana. This little dude was born just a few days ago here, or rather, I should say hatched. Wow. There's his little egg yolk being absorbed right there. Can you see it there, buddy? Turn it into the sun. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it was kind of interesting because what happened was this year, we only got three eggs that wound up actually surviving. Now, I was away at a race in North Carolina and Jerry actually collected the eggs. He did everything right, but for some reason, most of the eggs grew a mold on them and they shriveled up and died. And that was a bummer, man, because she had about 13 eggs in her. And, um, you know, normally I get close to 100% hatch rate out of this female, but happily, this little baby is healthy, is in good shape. And let me look over here. Was that? Was Petra that one? And, yeah, it was Petra yeah. and Petro, the rhino goddess. We'll have a look at them in a little bit. But um, I'm really happy to at least get this little one. And then if you look, I put this universal rock. Let me see if I can catch the next one. Oh, there. That one, by look the way, was so fast. It was fast, but look, there's yeah, telltale sign. The there's one. the little claws. So you know what? We're going to move over right and we're going to uh, shut. He just pulled it in. Oh, did he pull it in because that little tortoise stepped on it? Uh, we've got these little cherry heads too, man. They're doing well. They're growing up. We're just getting some fresh water in here. I like to put that over. I like it to drip in. Uh, it stimulates the tortoises to drink when they see water kind of uh, just kind of dripping into a watering hole. So we'll move this watering hole here. If you lift that, he's just going to take off. Yeah, but you know what? Let me see. I'm feeling lucky today. I'm going to have to lift it and grab quickly. All right, you ready, guys? Let's see if we can do this all in one motion. With, with I'm gonna come, I was gonna go this way, but maybe I can just as easily go. We'll do it from out here. Do it from out there? All right, sorry guys, you gotta look through the wire. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh my God, he got him right. I can't believe that. Got him. Look the at the size difference. The other guy was running difference. around so Look fast. at the size difference between these two. This is incredible. Is huge. I didn't even, I, I haven't even taken a look. The guys were hatched merely hours apart. But look at that. Look at the beautiful eyes on this. This is an incredible specimen. This is going to be a real, uh, he just. He looks so much bigger. He's isn't like that crazy? twice the size. Twice the size, but yeah. look at that. Oh, my skin's so soft. It is. It is really amazing. These guys are such delicate little animals. Now, you may have seen me grab it. I didn't hurt him. Everything's fine. He's playing dead, you see. Oh, no. Totally they do fine. this. They play dead because they think they have um, something's going to eat them. But I love the light color of this baby and how large it is. Also, I love the eyes. Just such a beautiful creature, man. And um, I love when I can offer these guys up for sale because they are such tremendous captives. They're in absolutely incredible. So for baby rhino iguanas... The care is very similar to larger ones. They're gonna eat the same foods. You wanna chop the food up um, a little bit finer than the adults. These guys are, of course, herbivores. That being said, I, I always say this, it's, it's funny. Herbivores often will take animal protein when it's available, when it's easy. When these guys are young, a cricket, a mealworm, a couple of little uh, invertebrates are not going to hurt it. Yeah, you want to be careful with their tails because we know that this is a species that will do caudal autonomy. They can actually drop their tails, as most lizards do, but you have to really start pulling on them. And that's, of course, a defensive uh, issue with them will or it grow tactic. Back? It'll grow back, but it's never as beautiful as the original tail. Okay, so look at how long and beautiful these tails are. 
They're just gorgeous. So, um, you know, you want to go ahead and you want to feed these guys. Oh, hibiscus, hibiscus flowers, leaves, mulberry leaves, collard greens, romaine lettuce, turnip greens, mustard greens, lots of uh, green leafy vegetable vegetables. Fluker diet, they'll eat. Um, what I like about the Fluker buffet blend for the tortoises is they have little squash, dehydrated squash. They have dehydrated carrots uh, and dehydrated red pepper. You can rehydrate that with the pellet and these guys just start to relish that taste. Uh, they're being very tame right now, uh, or very calm because I grabbed them up and look at this. Look I can't at this. believe you caught him so quick as the other guy was a nut. It, he was a nut. I was able to get them though. But really, really very beautiful cool. lizards. So, you know, you want to keep their, the overall humidity can be 60 to 75 percent. These guys are from the island of Hispaniola uh, in the Caribbean, which is where Dominican Republic and Haiti is. And they live in a more um, drier biome, even though they are in the tropics. They live in scrub, uh, thorny forests. They're not living in a dense rainforest. These guys are actually living more in rocky outcroppings uh, and drier areas of the islands. And actually, the interesting thing about these guys, uh, they they share their um, island with another type of cyclora that they they you know actually live. There's one island with two species, uh, and that's pretty interesting. That's the I believe it's the pingus. We saw that at um, it might be pingus or the Anandega. I'm I can't believe I'm I'm drawing a blank. This is a shame. I'll have to look it up and get back to you in a second. But anyway, uh, I can't know everything all the time, friends. Oh, this one's coming back to life. But look at how tiny. But they got this little pop belly because their yolk has been internalized. Now the yolk is inside their stomach and they're absorbing it. But I just I mean, look and then at that the will get smaller. That will get smaller and then they'll start eating on their own. And what I like to do is I keep them. Oh, uh, they're still absorbing they're still absorbing nutrition. nutrition. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I like to just hold on to them. Uh, we got them in here with the tortoises. A lot of my lizards will cohabitate with tortoises since they eat similar foods and they require similar care. And so they do very well in this outdoor kind of nursery that I've got set up for them. Let me just move this back for the tortoises. Okay, yeah, we moved it back for the tortoises. So basking areas from, uh, you know, 95 to 105 degrees, you see that they'll get some nice sun. They can bask on top of that log. Um, that really helps them metabolize their food. These guys are hind gut fermenters, uh, which means that they really need a lot of temperature to uh, get the food, the cellulose, uh, to break it down. They ferment the vegetation in something called a hind gut. So there's a lot of bacteria in there and those bacteria need warm uh, basking in order to really get moving. Uh, and by the way, look at that. Isn't that awesome when you big see guy. a beautiful little tortoise like that? Not so little. He's no, big. he's getting big. That's definitely Compared one of the older ones. Guys. Little cherry heads, red foots. It's so cool, man. But anyway, this is exciting. We're learning about baby rhinos. They, you just want to have fresh water in there for them, feed them like a little bit every day, offer the food for them, throw some bugs in there for them to kind of, it'll stimulate feeding. Um, you can do a misting, but you don't have to do a heavy misting for these guys. Um, they're going to drink from water. One of the ways that the tortoises are um, kind of drawn to water is when they see the rippling. Same thing with these. I, I would recommend getting a little cup. Oh, the okay. Drip, yeah. You poke a little hole in it, put it over the water bowl, and it will stimulate your iguanas and your tortoises to drink. And there you see that. It's just like the rain gathering in puddles. So they see the agitation on the surface. They're drawn to it. They drink, 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 and then they're happy. All right, so this is really cool, but we have something else cool. We're going to help someone out. I'm going to put these guys back. Right back in. There you go, little one. There you go. He'll move quicker. They are so fast, so you don't want them to get away from you. But look, he did good. Once they're down, yeah, they're moving nutty fast. Nutty. But I did mention we had three eggs, right? And so we're going to come sit over here. Because Where's the we other were going oh, to. Oh, he's here. There's so many little, uh, so many little iguanas. Uh, little, not iguanas, little uh, curly tails. But look at this little guy. This little guy, he just opened his eye. Now, this oh, was yeah. mold right here. So I don't know how this mold really affects the internal development of the offspring. Much smaller than that large one. That large one's uh, shell had no mold on it. These other two did. So it may stunt the growth a little bit. That's very possible. Yet to be determined. Yet to be determined. I mean, he looks smaller. So what I'm going to do is just simply, we're going to help That's him out of the egg today. Got, hey? Yeah, a little exactos. We're going to actually cut away from this little guy and make sure we don't har harm him. But I want to cut him out of the egg because I want to see how he's doing now. 
I'm doing this because I know he's ready to hatch, but I'm just concerned. Oh, yeah. Is that? This is the yolk, you see? Is that not good? It doesn't look good to me. It doesn't look good at all. Oh, no. He doesn't look developed. Oh, no. This is a problem. Like, he hatched, but this yeah that's that good. doesn't look he's good not developing at all no so this this is sad yeah i'm going to kind of thought that might that's, be the case th listen guys so i th this channel is about showing you what happens the reality of it okay and um, this is how we all learn and i knew just from his head that if you look at his head right here doesn't have a lot of muscle tone in the skull Okay, that's one of the things you want to look for. It's it might be hard for you to see, but there's not a lot of development of the muscles there. So that already showed me that just seeing him, I knew this animal was kind of a little bit underdeveloped or or not nourished as well from the yolk. And if you look, that yolk looks like it was infected by that yeah, uh, mold. That's a problem. That is a problem. So we I am knew gonna, this was a possibility. Right. So um, I don't know. If I'm going to be able to, if this animal is even going to be able to be saved, let's see. But you'll get an idea. Oh yeah, that oh, yeah. that that is rotted, and and look at this. Wow. It's actually where the mold is. Yeah, it is stuck. It exactly, it is stuck. It's like glued. And this guy is alive. This sucks. Look at this, guys. This is this the is tough terrible. Part. This oh. is the tough part. That so is that yoke is completely. Yeah infected yeah oh that's bad yeah that's not good oh what a bummer uh that's heartbreaking it is and we were so hopeful we, we were it was a possibility this animal is still alive oh now. it's disgusting kate's not going to want to see that on her patio mm -hmm. better than the kitchen floor though but yeah this is a problem and yeah there's an odor so this is definitely a rot guys i think the the humane thing to do is just to be put to put this animal down. Um, of course, I'm not gonna do that on camera here. Um, I'll tell you what though, this this is all rotted, look. Yeah, oh my God. It's the yolk, the That's yolk the is yolk. surrounded oh, yeah. and maybe suffocated him. Hold on a second. Oh my God. Wait Whoa, a wait second. wait a minute. Wait a second. He actually, I'm not gonna. Wait a second. Ooh, is that bad though? Would he not be absorbing the rest? I don't of know. That? This actually, let's clean him up. Let's get rid of this. So that nastiness. is just the yolk. That, that was the yolk, and so surprisingly, he doesn't look terrible. Well, here's the thing, guys. So this is why we opened the egg. Obviously, the yolk didn't nourish him as much as he needed. The yolk went the yolk bad. Not healthy. It is possible his body was developed enough that it was able to shut down the umbilicus here and stop from feeding. That's probably what happened. He stopped the feeding. Right there. There's the umbilicus. Yep. Okay, that's what attaches to the yolk. Let's rinse him. Let's get rid of this. Yeah. We're gonna rinse him. I might be able to tube feed this guy and get this guy going, which would be amazing. Where are you gonna rinse him? I don't know, I'm just gonna toss this yolk to be perfectly honest. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse him off. Same. Um, yeah, again, Kate's gonna love me, but let's get rid of <laughs> Saving, yeah. saving but we've lives. got you know what i've got a sink in the garage yeah let's go do that and happily i just cleaned the garage so it's not such an eyesore it's, oh have a look at my brand new amazing look at this look at this bike man another oh, we got gosh. my road bike we got a nice beautiful specialized crux frame is this I not just the like, cleanest gravel bike uh, you've ever seen it's okay to take a little little uh side turn when you talk we had about. a good ride this morning we so did we excited. rode and now we're doing reptiles but bikes was, and reptiles i'm the happiest man on earth okay Let's see, let's get this little one cleaned up. Because remember now, he's not gotten the nutrients he needed. And we're just gonna go ahead and clean him up. So how would you replace that? I'll show you. Oh look, there's some fight in him. He's got some life. He's got some life. This is exciting, guys. I hope this works out. Yeah, I think this might. I mean, he looks surprisingly look at full grown. I can't... Well, yeah, he's fully developed. But he won't absorb that yolk. That that's yolk didn't, right. That's a lot of nutrients he's not getting. Now remember, the one lizard that's big had no mold on his shell at all, on his eggshell. The other two, they're about the same size. But now what I'm gonna wanna do is what he's we- He's moving around. He's moving around yeah. quite a lot. This is actually better than I thought. And I would never have known that had I gone the extra mile, we cut the egg and I peeled that yolk off. 
Okay, you have to be, sometimes you have to be a bit of a scientist. You have to probe a little bit because if I didn't do that, guys, I mean, we never would have known. But how did you know it was time? Because he was poking out. Because his, his head, head was poking out, out and right. the others hatched. So I was gonna cut that egg open today anyway, just to see if there was a dead a neonate inside of it. Neonate is another word for baby reptile or uh, yeah, baby reptile, baby uh, that's just out of the egg. They're not quite an embryo anymore. They're actually fully developed. Uh, so it'll be a neonate for a little while and then it's a juvenile or a baby. But this is so crazy. So what I will do here, and this is kind of rad, guys, is we can, we'll, we'll try and do our best. This is just yolk gack that's still on him, okay? But what we'll try and do is I'll try and do a force feeding with baby food. I'll get baby food from my local supermarket and you'll get carrots or squash, something high in vitamin A, and we'll get an eyedropper, okay? And we'll just place, look at this. Look at this. You place a little pressure. I will place pressure on this guy's until it opens. Until it opens, and then oh, yeah, once look, it opens, he's licking. and once it opens, I'm able to then force feed him. Okay. We should do this. Uh, yeah, we should totally do this. So I'll tell you what. Let me run to my. I'm gonna run to my supermarket, and I'm gonna get an eyedropper. I'm gonna get some baby food, and we're gonna show you how to feed an underdeveloped or sickly animal. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from my trip to the supermarket and just in the short time that I've been gone, this little guy's perked up quite a bit. So this bodes well for this young animal, but we just want to give him the best possible start. So I just went and grabbed some, you know, sweet potatoes, squash, and it's got a little chicken. It's all ground up. A little protein's gonna be good for them. As I mentioned earlier, when they're young, they will take animal protein. So we're gonna go ahead and just open this up. And it's already pureed really nicely, but I'm gonna add it to some water that I've already got inside here, just to make it thin enough that it'll go through our little eyedroppers. You can also use a medical syringe if you have one. I do have some laying around, but we're gonna go and use these eyedroppers because that's probably what most of you guys are gonna have. So I'm just gonna mix it really well. I want it to be a thinner consistency. A couple of spoonfuls should do it. And then we should have a nice consistency and we're just gonna feed them with this. Let's do that. All right, very good. Move this out of the way. Awesome, man. I'm really excited when something like this happens because I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna find in there, but it turns out this little dude looks like he's gonna make it. So we're just gonna ensure that. I think now, this is great. Yeah, this is this is a lot of fun, but oh, look at this. This one looks like it's a, a jinky. Yeah, it'll be all right if it takes the food. Yeah. That's so funny. I want a straight one though. How did that, oh, is that on purpose? I, I don't know if it's is. on purpose yeah, or not. Yeah, it is, yep, it is. It is? Yes. You think? Yep. That doesn't look very, they could have done a better job. I think it melted. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. It still takes air. Yeah, let's see. Oh, look at that, that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. Just what you want. Just what I want. So, so this guy is very active. He's, he's been trying to get out for the last few minutes. Oof. Just gotta grab his eyes are open. Yeah. Very alert. So this is good news. So okay, I'm just gonna flip him on his back here. Now what you wanna be careful, you don't really want to go too far down. We're just gonna kinda open his mouth with the eyedropper. This is the challenging part. You have to have patience. You just press a little bit. Just like you were with the thumb. With the thumb. And in fact, sometimes it's easier for me to take my fingernail and get him to bite it and Right. You just get through his lip, press a little bit. See he's gonna close his eyes here. This is the hardest part, friends. You want me to drip it while nope, we do that? there we go. Actually, if you can. Yeah, hold on, let's do it right in front of the camera here. Yeah, yeah. let's do get it, like it going. This. You can kind of see. What I want to do, what you want to do is I'm going to open the mouth. Here, maybe, yeah. Oh, he's really being a brat at the moment. You don't want to squeeze that whole thing in. I, you yeah. just want to get it in, yeah. don't squeeze anything yeah. yet. I'll take over there. Just gonna but drip he, it if he opens. Well, don't drip it. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I'll show you what you got. Really so right. Sometimes you just take a minute, take a relax, say, let him relax again, and then try it again. I mean, we are forcing a dinosaur's mouth open. So yeah, even patience. when they're little, they're very tough. But you're, you're basically just getting that fingernail under the lip. And you know, the sad part is my eyes are getting much more difficult to see, which is sad. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now you just want to gently just put it in and he won't be able to shut his mouth. Just put it in.
Mm -hmm. Get it in there. All right, good. Now gently start yeah. to feed. A little Let bit. him lick it. See him licking it? Yeah. Gently push it in. He'll start to realize. There you go. Oops, right. Sorry, guys. That's fine. I was focused more on. Let's him. see. He'll he'll open it again. He's starting to understand. Hey, that wasn't. Now so you'll bad. now you'll be able to see it better. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we're trying. Okay, there we go. I think he knows now a little bit of what it is. Yeah, it tastes good. Yeah, maybe he's tasted obviously. Hey man, this is food, dude. He's this just is... like, what are you doing to me? Yeah, well, he'll he'll uh, learn. Uh, uh, there we there go. There we go. Oh, there it is. And he just yep, little and little bits. You can see. He's Look at him eating. Drinking it. Yep. There we go. How cool is that? That is so cool. I can't believe we thought we were gonna lose this guy. Yeah, I think this is this good. Is so good. And he's taking it on his own. So I'm not forcing it now. Sometimes you get a lizard that's so sick that you've got to force it and you want to make sure you do a tube feeding and that is best to have the proper tool tube. This he's taking it on his own. Look at this. Yeah, he's yeah, awesome. I'll even get him oh, a little look. more. Get him a little bit more. Seems to relish that. Um, I'm so excited. I thought. Ah, oh, no, this is good. For, this is new for you, right? Yeah, this is awesome. This is saving animals, man. This is what I love to do. Look at that. He's just taking it all. That's amazing. And now you know he's getting nutrients in him. He's he's actively seeking it out. Now. Oh, yeah. He's, you can tell he's kind of suctioning it. Oh, this is great. Oh, you're so stoked. That's I great. I am, man. I was so disappointed when we opened the egg up because I was like, he looks very, very Unwell. slow. Unwell, yeah. And then we opened it, and I was like, that's why. Yeah, well, he was encased right. in that rotted yolk, and it became almost like a straight jacket. So he wouldn't have been able to break out of that egg. And the nutrients probably weren't that great. That's right. Whatever. And he was compromised. He was probably not excited. Well, about. it's a very, you know, birth of any kind um, is traumatic. Even hatching, it takes strength. So it makes sense that this guy wouldn't have enough strength. Look at that. He's really seems to be enjoying that stuff. You see how dirty Kenan's fingernails are from mountain biking this morning? That's it. That was worth it. It was. Mountain biking in Florida. We were trail riding. Yes. <laughs> we should we should clarify. We're using mountain bikes on the trails down here, but it, it's working out good. So I'll give him a little bit more if he'll take it. Let's see if he opens up. I know that's getting in the right spot. Now, one thing that we have to manage our expectations because we yeah. don't know exactly what's going internally, what's going on internally with him. You know what I mean? In other words, did his insides develop properly? Or was that, you well, know, was it infected? And... Okay. He's letting me know he's done. Yeah. Which is fine. So that will dry up the umbilical. And you want to be careful not to aspirate. See, he's got oh, some, yeah, he's pushing yeah. some out of his oh, nose. Yeah. That's okay. Because the, the, the roof of his mouth, the nares go into the roof of his mouth. Okay. So it's okay. He's able to expel it. It's, it's if you get it into the trachea, that's the problem. But I don't see him in distress yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it seems like it's cleared out. That was interesting. So that was because it was too much. He just yeah. He just he didn't swallow some. But he I mean, he's it's the first food he's ever taken through his mouth. Right. Exactly. Interesting. Isn't this that is awesome? So great. I really hope for the best. I just well, I just the great news is is. He's off to a good start. Yeah. He okay. seems strong. I mean, he was really active when we were waiting. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful, man. We're just going to fatten this little guy up. So how often would you give him? I'm probably going to give him a, maybe uh, twice a day. I'll give him just like a, a Whatever little, he'll take. Yeah, just to see, you know. Look, he seems to know. And you just gently drip a little bit now. And he's just drinking. So he's hydrating, getting some nutrients in there. And um, where will you store him during this time? I am actually going to put him back in this little container and put him back in the incubator. So it's very warm climate. Correct. All right. That's going to do it. Yeah, I'll just put him back in there. And um, man, we're learning a lot today, huh? In today's video, this is really cool. How to care for healthy ones and then ones that are a little bit compromised. Now, after about a week or so of this tube, not, not necessarily tube feeding, but assisted feeding, I'll go ahead and start offering some uh, solid foods for him and see if he'll take those. We're gonna be looking for a little more tone on these back legs, okay? We want them to fatten up a little bit. You can see they're a little bit thin, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. And like I said, He's got some spunk, man. So, in in regards to the the what was it mold? 
Yeah. Um, so w- any of that could that potentially be an infection that could last? Right. We well, want to put silver down on anything. Or? Uh, no. There, uh, fortunately, it does not look like there's any mold that actually has attacked him. It attacked the yolk. What I think happened is he was able to um, this this umbilicus basically shut off, and so. The yolk and him were then separate entities. You at didn't that point. need to cut it away. That was separate. no. That yeah. just it was already pretty much you know oh. disattached. Uh, detached, I believe, is the word. Detached. He's detached. got a little character. He's yeah, he uh, does. So we're gonna we're gonna see if he can. I love just stroking my little lizard. That's so funny. Very very cool. I'm so. excited. I really hope for the best. Yeah, man. Well, this was a great a great little find, huh? So something that we thought was tragic turned out to be hopeful, and that's all you can ask for with reptiles. Remember, reptiles will lay, most of them will lay quite a bit of eggs. Most of the babies go back into the food chain. Uh, they don't survive, and that's why they lay so many eggs. It, didn't, it kind of secures the survival of at least one or two of the animals to adulthood. So I'm, I'm really happy that we're able to do this here in captivity to assist this animal. We're going to place them back inside here. And then we are going to just put them back in the incubator. And he would have stayed in that nest for a little while. Okay. But this is definitely going to be a cool story for us to follow here at Camp Cannon. And uh, thank you guys for being a part of it and taking this little journey with me. Don't worry, I'll let you know what happens to our little guy. If you want to throw out some names in the comment below, I'd be more than happy to use them if I like the name. And uh, we'll see how he does. Hopefully it's a good story that we can follow along and we can watch this guy grow and get stronger over the weeks and months to come. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys again real soon.